Welcome! In these video tutorials, I would like to talk about the fundamentals of chemistry that will be useful to build your foundations for any chemistry class, either at the high school level or at the college level. So let's get started. Chemistry is the science of matter and the changes this matter can undergo. It comprises of everything material and tangible around us, everything living or dead, vegetable or mineral, things on Earth and in outer space, everything contains chemistry. The discovery and development of materials have been so important that they define our timeline. In the figure here, we can see that the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age are all named after materials. And during these times, tools were developed for hunting, building homes, and cooking. And as time went on, more durable and malleable materials were discovered. Out of these three, iron is the best. This is followed by the Common Era, of which the Middle Ages is the first part. This is also known as the Porcelain Age, and this is when ceramics were first used for bases and plates. Then we have the Industrial Era, and this is when steel was key for making things like the steam engine and the spinning jenny, which were used in the transportation and the clothing making industry, respectively. Finally, we have the informational age, which is our current period, and silicon has been important for making things like transistors, which are at the core of computers and cell phones. Chemistry is a science of two levels. On the one hand, we have the macroscopic level, which are things that we can see with our bare eyes. On the other hand, we have the microscopic level, which is the atomic scale. We can only see at this scale using things like microscopes. And this is where chemical reactions happen. In the example here, we can see a magnesium wire reacting with oxygen from air and forming magnesium oxide. At the macro scale, we see a magnesium which is gray in color and upon applying some sort of heat, the magnesium starts to turn white, and this is the appearance of magnesium oxide. At the microscopic scale, magnesium atoms interact with oxygen from air, and upon applying the source of heat, the magnesium atoms start to react with oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio of magnesium to oxygen atoms. And we will see in future lectures why this happens. Scientists, including chemists, use a series of steps to ask questions, formulate hypotheses, perform experiments, and reach conclusions. This series of steps is known as the scientific method. I will use an example of how to use the scientific method based on a video from Project Farm. In this video, he basically tries to answer which AA battery is the best in the market. For this example in particular, I will only compare double A alkaline batteries so that they all have the same chemistry. I will lay out the steps of the scientific method that this person uses to reach his conclusions. The first step is to make an observation, which in this case is that different double A batteries differ in price and they are all alkaline. that differ in price. The second step is to ask a question. In this case, the question is which one of these batteries will last the longest and cost us the lowest price? So which battery will last the most at the lowest price? And for this, we need to know the capacity of each battery to store energy and divide it by its price. The units to measure these are in milliamp hour percent of a dollar. And we will talk about units in later lectures. The third step is to come up with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is basically a logical idea that will help you to answer your question. 
In this case, I personally think that the most expensive battery will be the one that lasts the longest. So the most expensive one will be the best. Step four is to come up with an experiment that will help you answer your question and prove your hypothesis right or wrong. In the figure here, steps one to three are represented, and step four is here, the experiment. In this video, he uses a device to discharge each of the batteries at a rate of 300 milliamps. And once the batteries are fully discharged, it provides us with the capacity of the battery and the time it took to fully discharge each battery. So the experiment is at a discharge rate of 300 milliamps. We can get the capacity and then divide it by the respective price of each battery. And then we can compare against one another. Having discharged all the batteries at 300 milliamps, the next step in the scientific method is to write the results. We can see in the first graph on the left that the capacity values of all the batteries are given in milliamp hour. The highest value here is the energizer lithium, but this is a different chemistry, so we'll have to exclude that one. The rest of the batteries are AA alkaline batteries, and these are the ones that we're interested in. The highest value here is given by the energizer at 1888 milliamp hour. If we take all of these capacity values and divide it by their price, we get values in milliamp hour per cent of a dollar. The highest value here is the Amazon Basics at 3237, and is followed by the energizer at 2564. So the results can be summarized as follows. The first point is that the highest capacity value is given by the energizer. And the second point is that the highest capacity per unit price is given by the Amazon Basics and the second highest is given by the energizer. The last point of the scientific method is to write the conclusion. But first, let's address our hypothesis. I propose in the hypothesis that the most expensive battery, in this case the Duracell Quantum, at $1.15, would be the most long-lasting battery. But if we look at the capacity per unit value of this one, it's only $15.99, which is about half of the Amazon Basic. So unfortunately, this statement is not true. So we will have to write that the most expensive battery is not the best. The result quantum in this case is not the best. Now, which battery is the best? In my personal opinion, it will have to be the energizer because it gives the highest capacity value and is the second highest capacity per unit price. So it has a long lasting life and it's not too expensive. We can see that the price is at 73 cents and it only differs by 30 cents with the Amazon Basic. The Amazon Basics is pretty good also, but the capacity is 1382, which is about a 500 difference of milliamp hour with the Energizer. So you will have to change this battery more often, but it's a 30 cent that you are saving. So it's up to you. I would prefer a battery that I don't have to change too often 
and it's a reasonable price. So I would say that the Energizer is the best battery double A battery because it has a high capacity and a high capacity per unit price. And this would end the scientific method analysis. Let's talk about the branches of chemistry. The first one is organic chemistry, which studies most carbon-containing chemicals. Some examples include pharmaceuticals, plastics, and fossil fuels. The second one is inorganic chemistry, which focuses on matter that does not contain carbon. Some examples are minerals, metals, and non-metals. The third one is biochemistry, which studies matter and processes of living organisms. Some examples are metabolism and fermentation. The fourth one is analytical chemistry, which studies components and composition of substances. People into this field can go into quality control of food of this, or the study of food nutrients. The fifth one is physical chemistry, which focuses on the behavior and changes of matter. Some examples are the study of reaction rates and reaction mechanisms. The sixth one is theoretical chemistry, which uses mathematics and computers to understand the fundamentals in chemical behaviors. This is usually done at research laboratories at universities. There is two branches of engineering also that heavily use chemistry. The first one is chemical engineering, and the second one is material science and engineering. Chemical engineering uses industrial chemical processes, and for example, people here can work in the purification of metals, recycling, and also in fossil fuel uh, companies. Material science and engineering studies materials in terms of chemical structure and compositions. People in material science can manipulate materials at the atomic level and create artificial materials. And with this, I would like to end the first part of the chemistry introduction series. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.